My name is Brittany Weekman. I am a senior in high school. I enjoy drawing, photography, horseback riding, social media, and hanging with friends and family. By hearing those things, you probably think I am just a normal child teenager. I am deaf blind. Um, if you were to ask me two years ago, I would have said she was really quiet and shy. Um, very not outspoken, but now that I've known her longer, uh, she's, she's sassy. <laughs> she's very sassy. I would say I was born this way, but no one knew for sure at the time. I can say for sure it's the only way I ever remember being. My parents found out I was blind when I was two years old. A few months later they found out I could not hear either. So why in the world as someone who described herself as shy would I make a video all about me? The easiest answer is I want to show people what it's like to be me. I found out I was deaf blind at two, but now I'm 18, a legal adult in just week from my high school graduation. So what is it like being deaf? For me, the hearing on my right side is dead, at least that's the way Dr. Wright to describe it. The only thing I can hear from my right ear is extremely loud noises that are right next next to me, like an air horn. I use a hearing aid in my left ear. I've been working with Miss Kate since first grade. Brittany has a profound hearing loss um, in her right ear and a severe to profound hearing loss in the left ear. So um, her right ear really doesn't function well enough to even use a hearing aid. There's no usable hearing there that can be amplified. So she's not able to benefit from a hearing aid. My left ear can hear, but not really well unless I have a powerful hearing aid. Her left ear, she has had a hearing loss that has progressed over time, started as kind of a high frequency hearing loss and has progressed. And now she has about um, 10 to 15 decibels of hearing that she uses. So now that you have a better technical understanding of my hearing, I want you to hear what it's like to, for me to hear. This is what the average person hears. This is what Brittany hears. Um, with a profound hearing loss, there's damage of the inner hair cells of the cochlea or the inner ear structure. Um, if you look here, it's kind of the little snail shell um, organ here for hearing. Um, that also works along with the semicircular canals which are necessary for balance. Um, but with profound hearing loss, the hair cells in the cochlea are no longer functioning. So kind of like grass that waves in the, in the breeze, um, the hair cells of the cochlea kind of wave in fluid of the inner ear and that's what's been damaged um, with any degree of hearing loss. But with profound, they're, they're primarily absent. Did we find out that I am a candidate for a cochlear implant? We no longer rely on your whole ear system. We don't rely on the, the outer ear delivering the sound through the, the ear canal to the eardrum and the middle ear space and using kind of an acoustic signal of the, of the cochlear or inner ear. Um, instead, we use an um, electrical signal. So the sound comes into the speech processor. And instead of going through this ear system, it's delivered through the um, the external device here into the device that's on the other side of the skin through a magnet that's held on with a magnet and then an electro array is um, inserted by a surgeon it's to be done at the hospital they put it into the inner ear and what it does is stimulate the hair cells or stimulate where the hair cells would have been that have been damaged in the frequency range that we want to bring that audibility and hearing back so um, we're at the point now where um, for that right ear, since it's not helping anyway, the um, audiologists and the team at the University of Michigan feel that Brittany would benefit from a cochlear implant in the right ear um, and kind of monitor that left ear since we've seen that progression over time. 
we want to monitor that so at the point where she can't hear with that left ear well enough to be able to function and and hear what she needs to hear throughout you know to meet her daily daily needs then um, an implant will probably be recommended for that left ear at some time. I'm in the early stages of appointment and testing. I haven't made a decision yet but if I decided to it could possibly happen over the summer. My vision is harder to explain. When we talk about vision most people understand 2020 vision. With my content, I have 2200 vision. Without my content, I have 2800 vision. When I don't have my content lenses in, I can only see the very shape. They could be people, they could be objects. I can't see the details of the, of the face. In order to get be classified as legally blind, um, 20, a student is 2070, they are classified as a visual, they have a visual impairment. Um, once they hit a 2200 to 2400, that is when they are classified as legally blind. Um, not, and that is with best correction. That is after the student is prescribed glasses, that's the best that they can see. And usually when it gets to that point, a lot of students' um, glasses don't work for them. And that's when the large print and audiobooks and, and magnifiers and such come into play for their education. But not being able to see things like everyone else is not the only issue. I see these little floaties in my eyes, but it's been there for so long I, I hardly notice them. I am completely blind in the dark. Photophobia is when someone has um, is very sensitive to light and Brittany has photophobia which means when it is a brighter light she is it is more sensitive and it can um, make the eyes hurt um, so it's best to reduce the light and glare for Brittany to get the best out of her vision. Since I have always been deafblind I don't know what it's like to see or hear. I can still work like everyone else just in different ways. The things I use to make my life easier are a FM system, iPad, content lens, hearing aid, a cow soap, special education services, and of course, Mrs. Vader. She's my one on one aid that has been with me since fifth grade. First, my hearing aid. I can't hear anything without it. An FM system basically helps me hear the teacher's query. The teacher wear a microphone that is like a radio, a broadcast and FM signal that I am able to receive directly into my hearing aid. But when I am listening to the teacher, I can't hear anything else near me unless I push, push a button on my hearing aid. I wear a content lens in my right, right eye. It helped my vision greatly, but I still have a difficult time with step or curves. I see them as a flat surface. In very limited vision of things that are not directly in front of me. A telescope helped me see things far away, like if I am trying to read a street sign or see someone way down the hallway. I use an iPad in crash to enlarge my paperwork. It also help bring the overhead to me and I don't have to carry large print book anymore because I can enlarge the text on my iPad. As someone who has a disability, I qualify for special education services. These teachers help me with the things I need to succeed in my classroom. Monica taught me to read and type braille. She also is the one who showed me how to use Bookshare on my iPad instead of using huge large print books. Monica worked with my classmate teachers to make sure I get I was getting what I needed visually. Mrs. Goshin was my fourth and fifth Great teacher. There was times you know, that we had to, like any of her assignments for her vision, we had to 
make them so they were um, bigger so she was able to see. And I mean, unfortunately, lack of, we, we didn't. And she was sitting there and she would, like, she would never complain. She was trying to, you know, look and see and trying to participate. So we were like, someone hurry up and go, you know, enlarge the pieces for her. But I, mean, I think that's just a testament of how hard of a worker she was. And it, but she never complained. And that just goes back to show the good person, just the, she's always positive. She was just always worked hard and was positive. Miss Kate helped me with my hearing. She helped get hearing aid when I was in school. And she was usually the one to fix my hearing aid when it wasn't working. When my hearing got worse, she helped me make my hearing aid more powerful. Miss Kate worked with Mrs. Barkhausa to make sure I had what I needed in class when it came to my hearing. When it comes to socializing, I face Brittany when I'm talking to her, make sure to not to cover my mouth, um, make sure I ask her if she's heard me or can understand. Um, but on the same note, I'll have to say, you, we need to make sure we speak loud enough for Brittany, but for the longest time, and I know Mrs. Water kind of touched base on this, Brittany would be so quiet and so shy that I couldn't even hear her talk. And um, so, I would often have to say, Brittany, I can't hear you. Mrs. Vada is one of the most important person in my life. She basically my eyes and ears for me in school. She takes notes and makes sure I hear the teacher's instruction. Mrs. Vada is also like a mom to me. She actually is the one who told me it's okay to let people know what you have to stay. I'm going to add to that um, and say that I feel Brittany has a stronger drive. She never, Brittany never says no. She's always willing to give it a try even though it's out of her comfort zone and most likely she will need assistance or it will be something she can't complete but she never says that. She gives it a shot. My least favorite place to go is to school. Like most teenagers, I hate waking up early. It's what I dislike about school. But also, it's hard being a teenager who is different. And even harder when you know you are different. Brittany is different than the rest of the students because um, due to her hearing and vision loss, she has had to overcome other barriers that, day-to-day um, -day barriers that other students don't have to. So I feel like um, she has to work harder every day and it, I'm sure her days are more exhausting the, than other students just to be able to hear and see. I started school at a young age, two or three years old. Back when I was little, I would talk a lot to my classmates. But as I grew up, I became less social in school. Mrs. Noah was my first and third grade teacher. Because of those impairments, it, things were harder for her. I had to make sure that she could see me when I was talking to her, and I had to make sure that like, the work was adjusted or accommodated so that she could see the work. So that was the biggest difference. She was still a girl in the classroom, and she still had friends. Because I come off as shy. A lot of people think I don't want them to talk to me and they are doing me a favor by giving me my own space. Actually, it kind of bothers me because I like to talk a lot, but I don't like to be the first one to start a, the conversation because it makes me feel like the other person doesn't want to talk to me and they are just forcing themselves to because they feel sorry for me. The reason I don't talk a lot is because I'm afraid to make a fool of myself by not pronouncing some of the words right. It is all due to hearing. I cannot hear some of the sounds. Her thresholds fall down here in this profound range. So um, if we put the severity here on the grid, you can see that her left ear 
kind of is in that profound range and then rises just into the severe range in the very high pitches. So it's a good example and a good visual to show um, you know, that she's not able to hear those speech sounds without uh, a hearing aid. Um, and then her right ear, which is the circles, is even more um, impaired and falls in that profound range. So, um, you know, maybe she can hear this jet plane, even though it's still above her frequency or her threshold there. Um, but that's why it really doesn't help her a lot for hearing. There was a point in my high school career where I would skip school every week almost. I did that because I felt like I didn't fit in. As I looked around at everyone in my school, I would think, wow, these people are all normal, and here I am with disabilities. I felt kind of miserable during that year. I felt like I was the only person with visual and hearing impairment. I have teachers and family members who worried about me as I kept missing school. Then Mrs. Vada said to me one day, if you don't think you belong here, then where do you belong? I didn't have an answer to that question. She pushes and told me that if I was so convinced if I didn't belong, then I needed to have an idea where I did belong. I didn't believe what she, she was saying was true. My mom wrote a note to Mrs. Vader and Mrs. Valcausa, who worked together asking if they could call her. I had no idea that this was happening. My mom was seeking help for me. She cried during the phone call because she didn't know what to do to help me. They organized a meeting with the high school counselor. When I found out I was going to be going to the counseling office, I wasn't really happy. After a little discussion and some tears from my mom and me, they came up with some ideas to help me get more involved with school and my classmates. They started to bring up organization for me to attend. Overall, at the end of my freshman year, I became happy and knew somewhat where I belonged. I'm so glad my mom and teacher helped me because I probably wouldn't be as happy I am now. Sophomore year, I came back to school and I attend sport camp. Sport camp is for the blinds and some hearing impairments to do sports. They will do anything to help those with vision loss do sports. This camp changed my view of myself. It made me feel like I am not the only person in the world with my disabilities. It made me feel like I belong somewhere, which was here. They also taught me that I am I can do anything that I set my mind to. Nothing can stop you. After I attended sport camp, I started to come out of my shell. Junior year, I started attending EdTech for digital media arts. I was thrilled to do some work there, but I didn't know how it would work out since I need everything in large. I have to say that um, when I first learned that I would have a student who was legally blind and legally deaf in my digital media arts class, the first thing I thought is, how is this student going to do what the rest of the kids are doing? Because digital arts is a visual medium and you, you have to use audio. And so when I first before I even met Brittany and I heard that, I, I, I kind of just wondered how it would all work. And then I met Brittany and I, though she was quiet, I could see by her work that she worked really hard to um, not let her um, disabilities um, predict or, uh, how do I put it? She worked really hard not to let her disabilities limit her in the classroom. I enjoy meeting people, but the class was met with other school districts. 
and I just didn't want them to know about my disabilities. It also felt like freshman year again, like I was the only one different. Coming back to EdTech the second year wasn't so bad. I started to open up a little bit more. Although I don't speak up for myself, I have learned it, it's hard when I meet new people because I have to teach them that I don't need their help. These fights, my disabilities, I can do things for myself. I really appreciate the things my classmates do, but I don't think they realize I can do these things. I can do anything, but I have to do it differently. In DMA, we produced a new program called The Edge. Students were directors, producers, and reporters. The moments that stand out to me about Brittany is when we were in the studio and we're doing studio production. And the thing that um, I think Brittany has the hardest time with in my class is speaking up, speaking up for herself. Um, and I've really seen her grow, but as a director, you have to speak up and you have to tell other people what to do. And I wasn't sure, you know, th there's a lot going on. So um, having, uh, you know, being a director is hard when you have 2020 vision and you have perfect hearing. Now add, it, because as a director, you're managing the rest of your classmates, which is challenging. It's challenging as a teacher to manage a um, room full of high schoolers. And then putting that onto a student is even more difficult. And I always enjoy watching my students step up. But knowing that um, you know, speaking up has always been a challenge for Brittany in my class. And then when she took on the role of director, I think I was unsure how she would do. And I remember when she did her first practice and you could tell that she had really been paying attention to the other students and had really been paying attention and had really prepared and we were just doing practices and she did her first practice directing and she rocked it and the rest of her classmates applauded her because she did such an awesome job and I just remember as a teacher going wow you know would I have done that good of a job myself my first time so that's a memory I think that really makes me that stands out for me with Brittany in my class when she you know when she amazed not only me but her classmates this year Mrs. Holiday picked me as her top senior in digital media arts. I take 20 Britneys in my classroom. So when people say to me, you have a, a legally blind, legally deaf student in your class, I say, yep, and she's one of my best students. At the end of April, I traveled on the train with my digital media arts class to, to Chicago. It's the biggest city I have ever been to. And the trip was the first time I had ever used trains and buses to get around. It made me realize that someday I could live in a city somewhere like Chicago and be able to get around by myself and not have to rely on other people. I am starting to see there are opportunities for me. This summer, I will be very busy. After my graduation, May 27th, I will be going to Kalamazoo for a college assessment for students with low vision. I was also accepted into Helen Keller National Center in New York City. I will spend two weeks there in July and August learning how to be more independent. And getting in was a surprise to me, but I don't think it was, it surprised everyone, especially my teachers. Mrs. Silverin is my 12th grade English teacher. I just think that as far as limitations, that yeah, um, Brittany has some physical limitations, but 
her drive and her uh, willingness to learn and her willingness to change and, and accommodate and um, try and, again, do the best that she can do for herself. Everybody has limitations, whether that's academic or um, in sports or physical. Um, every single person has some kind of limitation, but the, the way that you get around them or the way that you deal with them and manage them, and Brittany's got that down. She knows what she wants, she knows how to get it, and I'm really, really proud of her. I worked really hard to where I am today. I won't throw all that hard work away either. I plan on going to college right now. I think I want to study for privacy and art. I'm not sure what I want to do when I get older, but I think that isn't much different than most 18 years old. And she never used um, her lack of sight or her lack of sound as an excuse. She always um, tried to do her best, even though um, she did have those obstacles to overcome. I really appreciate all the people that helped me get to this point in my life. I plan on, I want everyone to know that I plan on continuing in pushing my limits and providing people with all I can do. So next time when you see someone like me, don't assume they, they can't do it. Let them show you.